Oh. Oh. There we go. Oh, hello. Um, you probably don't recognize this camera, but this is the Sony A6500. I broke it a few years ago. Very... Yeah, still pretty painful. And I actually sent this out to get repaired, but the repair shop said, you may as well buy a brand new camera because it's gonna cost that much to repair it. And so I just held onto it. I was cleaning up the office, found this in a box, and I was like, you know what? I've never seen the inside of a Sony camera. And so I think I'll go do that. And so we're gonna open up a Sony camera and answer some of your questions. All right, let's get started. Does that, does that make you feel weird when I like drop a camera like this? <laughs> oh, I'm making scratches on the on the stool. Oops. Uh, well, it's kind of open already. Let's just rip apart the uh, the handle. Oh, oh, it's like skin. It's weird. It's really weird. Ooh. This is where the battery would go and the SD card would go. And it looks like there's a lot of components on the grip uh, side of the camera. And I do remember the grip being a little bit too hot uh, whenever I was filming in 4K. And so maybe maybe that's why. Okay, here we go. So. Uh, Oh, it's just gonna, oh gosh, it's really tight. <sighs> okay, so I really thought I'd just rip it open with my bare hands and apparently I'm not that strong. So uh, we're gonna get some tools. Break apart, man. The body is pretty tough, so I guess that's a good thing. Wow, there's a lot of scratches on the stool. I should probably buy another one. Well, maybe maybe a hammer is not the right thing to do. Okay, so uh, as I'm doing that, let's go ahead and answer the first question. Hey Sydney, what is up? First off, allow me to apologize for the terrible quarantine haircut situation that's going on over here. As for my question, it's kind of a two-parter. Firstly, what's your favorite place you've ever traveled to? And secondly, what's one place that's kind of on your bucket list that you'd love to travel to, but you haven't had a chance to go yet? Uh, good question, uh, Mason. Uh, my favorite place that I've traveled to so far would probably be, oh gosh, there's so many places. Um, it'd prob probably be Lake Garda, Italy. I absolutely love it there. I shot a wedding there many, many years ago. So it was a free trip and I got paid. And so I took my wife along as a uh, second shooter and we just had the best time of our lives. And so we shot at Lake Garda Castle. Um, I'll show you some of the photos on screen, but it was just one of the most beautiful places I've ever visited. And I definitely want to go back there again one day because I accidentally dropped my flip-flop, my favorite flip-flop, and it's somewhere floating at Lake Garda and uh, I want to retrieve it one day. Uh, as far as uh, a place that's on my bucket list, wow. Uh, it's really hard to choose, man. Um, I would probably say, uh, I wanna say New Zealand, just cause it just looks so beautiful. Um, obviously a huge Lord of the Rings fan and um, I don't know, that's a, a really cool place to visit. I know I was supposed to go to Bali this year. I was really looking forward to going there, but um, uh, you know what, let's stick with New Zealand. I wanna to go to New Zealand. Oh, and by the way, if you are from New Zealand or have been to New Zealand, then let me know in the comments below what cool places to visit. I wanna know. Okay, let's uh, figure out an entry point here. This is probably gonna make a lot of you nervous right now, so I'm just gonna go BAM! Oh. All right, well, that did nothing. By the way, let me know in the comments below how much you hate seeing this right now. Just get it repaired, Sid. It's still fine. Really? Really? Ah, okay, I'm making some progress here. Taking up the top part of the A6500. Oh, please. Yep, that's broken. Oh, hey. The flash popped up. There we go. Progress. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next question. This is a huge one for a lot of people. If you had to start scratch all over from the beginning and you didn't have anything, what would be the very first piece of equipment would you buy? What would you need first? First one. Nothing else. Just that. To start creating. Hmm. Uh, that question was from uh, Jeff. Appreciate that, buddy. Ooh, that's a good one. If I had to start all over, I had to pick one camera, one camera, um, start all over, like start over like now and this year. And if that's the case, 
I would probably go with the Sony a6600 uh, if I were to go with Sony. However, I'm really tempted with the Canon R5. I mean, that camera just looks delicious. And so maybe I'd go with that. I don't know. It's not even out yet. I mean, I'm talking about, but I've had to start over like right now. Uh, I would probably go with the Sony a6600. You got the flip out screen, there's unlimited recording, and overall it's just a really, really, really good camera. So is the Canon R5. Ooh, one of those two. I feel like I'm just gonna have to just rip it apart. I don't wanna hurt my hands though. Funny story, I went to a magic shop like years ago and uh, I wanted to buy this one particular uh, magic set and uh, the guy said, hey, all right, let me show you how this works. Give me your hands. Oh, then he looked at my hands and said, you have slender fingers. So I don't wanna hurt my slender fingers. Okay, okay, all right, it's starting to crack, it's starting to crack, it's starting to crack, okay, here we go. It's starting to crack. Oh boy, I feel like I should wear gloves here. Here we go, one, two, oh, I'm gonna hurt myself. Hold on, all right, here we go. Slender hands are protected. Goodness, it even hurts through the gloves. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there you go, just... <sighs> okay, next question. Hey Sydney, this is Jason Bullock. I love your content. Uh, quick question about those who want to get into freelancing and picking up a few clients. Would it be better to brand yourself as your own personal name, such as, for me, Jason Bullock, or to come up with some company names, such as Bullock Films? Can't wait to hear your response. Uh, that's a, a really good question. Um, I don't think it really matters. I mean, if you make content for YouTube, I would suggest just use your name because people wanna know who you are. But I guess if you wanna have a company and work with clients, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a separate business entity. I mean, it sure sounds more professional than having you know your name than productions, right, at the end of it. So having something like, cool video productions or whatever it is, probably would sound and look more professional to potential clients. And so if you're gonna lean towards more doing that kind of stuff, working with clients, then yeah, for sure, make a make a business name. Or maybe you can do a combination where you're doing YouTube content or online content in general and client work and all that stuff, and then have your business name as the umbrella company and underneath it are the other smaller factions like the YouTube content, the client work, etc., etc. But it wouldn't really hurt to have your business as its own separate name. Like personally, I'd much rather work with a company with a professional sounding name like Blue Silver Productions versus Phil or Karen. Karen's even worse. Woo! Wow, look at that. Okay, all right, here we go. Making some progress. We got the uh, viewfinder right there about to be ripped off by my brute strength. Ooh, ooh, maybe not. Why would you do this, Sid? Why would you do this to your camera? Well, why not? Just leave me alone, Dad. Oh, look at that. <sighs> it's really fascinating. It's so tiny. Really tiny. I'm always looking at trying to get collaborations off the ground, and I'm wondering if there happens to be a base level of subscribers or views per month that you need before other YouTubers will take you seriously as a new YouTuber in terms of being able to launch collaborations, even if those other YouTubers are similar channel sizes. So I'd love to know if there's like a baseline threshold that you found that's required for starting meaningful collaboration with other YouTubers? Uh, great question. Um, I don't think there is a threshold. Uh, I think that can be a myth and that myth can be busted. I, I started my first collab, well, I don't even remember, but it was a very low number. I even had my first brand deal when I had like maybe four or 500 subscribers. I would just say ask, just no harm in asking. Worst case scenario is that you get a no and that's totally okay. And you might, you know, maybe want to try again. But yeah, there's no threshold for meaningful collaborations with bigger YouTubers. And as long as it's a good idea and provides value to not just your subscribers, but to their subscribers as well, then, uh, then you got a good chance at collaborating with other YouTubers. But yeah, you don't have to have a, a certain threshold for other YouTubers to take you seriously. Oh! <laughs> wow! That is crazy. Look at that! It's like a little city inside. That's so crazy. Got the building and there's the uh, convention center right over there. Oh, <gasps> I think, I think we found the brains of the camera. There's the, uh, there's a processor right there. This guy right there. 
At least I think that's a processor. Wow, okay, and the uh, the sensor is uh, right behind there. So see that, it's covered by these little shutters. So we're gonna, we're gonna take this apart and see what it looks like. <gasps> oh, I see the, uh, I think I see the five axes stabilizer. Oh, that's crazy, it just moves. Oh, it jiggles. That is crazy balls. Okay, so it looks like the five axis stabilization is a lot bigger than I thought. Ooh. Ah, I'm actually bleeding. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. You see? Sensitive hands. I hope the people at Sony are watching. Probably thinking, we're not gonna support this guy again. Crazy, ripping out our cameras. Oh, so much. Okay, this is the, uh, this is the, oh. Okay, so here it is, guys. This is the Sony sensor. Look at that. Wow. There it is. Get the light in there just to show the, there it is. There's the Sony sensor. And here is the IBIS. See that, how it just moves around? That's the in-body image stabilization. Five axes right there. So that is how the A6500 is able to remain steady because of this stabilization. That's all I wanted to see. I just wanted to see the sensor and the IBIS. That's all, look at that. Uh, well, that's the video. Uh, thank you guys for sending your questions. It was awesome to feature you in this video. And yeah, that is what the inside of a Sony camera looks like. The sensor, the IBIS, and the rest of the stuff. I uh, should probably start cleaning up. Uh, don't wanna step on anything too sharp, but hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like, subscribe, and bell buttons down below so that you get notified of upcoming videos because you never know what camera I might tear apart. All right, guys, I'm out, but I'll see you in the next video. Bye!